There's a group of companies that are profiting off of our misery right now. A group that is racking up billions of dollars in profits while average Americans struggle to pay for food to fill up their gas tanks. Of course, I'm talking about Big Grain. Yeah, Big Grain, rolling in cash because of skyrocketing food prices, even as people around the world are rioting for grain. For example, company Bunge or Bungie, which sells fertilizer and processes grain, they posted profits of almost $300 million last quarter, nearly 2,000% increase from last year. Where's the, uh, where's the outcry? Where, where's Chuck Schumer? Why isn't he doing a press conference in front of a tractor? Why isn't Hillary Clinton demanding that the government take Big Grain's windfall profits? I want you to keep those questions in mind as I tell you that Royal Dutch Shell, you know, big oil, just reported their first quarter earnings increased 25% to $9.1 billion. The nerve of a company to earn money by selling a product that people want. Yet, the more these oil companies report, and buckle up because ExxonMobil is tomorrow, the more outrage seems to grow. But I have to tell you, I'm a capitalist. That's not the number we should be paying attention to. We should look at the profit margin. I'm a guy who appreciates success. And I think it's a pretty sad day in America when instead of celebrating profits, you're forced to justify and explain them. John Hoffmeister, he is the uh, president of Shell Oil. John, first of all, I want to ask you an honest question. Have I ever taken a dime from you at Big Oil? I hope so. I, I'm open. You can send them my way anytime you want. Nine billion dollar profit. Here's my beef. I don't think that that's the number people should uh, should concentrate on. You, they should look at your profit margin. What is your profit margin, sir? Well, the profit margin is a very average margin of about seven and a half percent. If you looked at, let's say, you use the 9.1 number, we also report a cost of replacement goods, which is like a 7.8 billion dollar number. And if it was 7.8 million on a revenue stream of 114 million, nobody would say a word. But change million to billion, the percentage is the same, right. and everybody gets upset. Exactly. Because it is a big number. It's a big number because we're selling 3.5 million barrels, that's barrels, not gallons, of oil a day into the open markets, and we're selling some probably 8 million, gall or 8 million barrels of retail product. Okay, but today. here's the here's problem, John. That I think people see these numbers, and it's always coupled with this phrase, record profits. It's always does, and so we, it only comes out when you know we're struggling at the gas pump, and it shows you having record profits. It, record it, it, profits. We're also spending record amounts on capital investment for new uh, developments around the world. We're also paying record amounts in taxes. If we go back to the end of 2007, we made 27 billion in profit. We spent 25 billion on capital expenditures in the year. We paid 18 billion dollars in taxes, which people, does, a lot of elected officials, don't want to hear that number because they don't want to have to deal with it. We returned 16 billion dollars to shareholders. Actually, it was quite a good year for everybody. Let me let me, uh, let me ask you this: What happens? I mean, Hillary Clinton. It must have made your your blood run cold when you heard Hillary Clinton say that she was going to take your profits. Well, I think it's for government to decide what to do from a tax policy. You know, I've heard so many different proposals over my time working in this industry that I just did kind of roll with it. But one thing that Hillary Clinton has done, which I do appreciate, is she has said in Houston, when other presidential candidates would not come to Houston and speak at a presidential summit, she has said we need to drill for more oil. God bless her for saying that, because that's exactly been what I've been saying for the last three years. Could we be energy independent if we would really use the resources that are under our soil and under our oceans? Well, over a long period of time, perhaps we could. But what people need to do is separate the future into what we call the short term, let's say the next decade, the medium term, something like the next 10 to 25 years, and then the really long term beyond 25 years. Right. How, how, Over the next 10 years, we have got to have more hydrocarbons. We can't sustain this economy. We can't sustain our lifestyle without more oil okay. and gas. So how fast, because people are now all of a sudden interested in Alaska, how, how fast from first, them saying yes to the first gallon at the pump? Well, it depends upon how many lawsuits we encounter, how many issues we face in terms of legislating de degree of difficulty. Give me a decent guess. 12 to 15 years. Holy cow. That's a long time. Yeah. 
And we've been under a 30-year moratorium in this country. For building refineries. For, well, for actually for exploring in the Outer Continental Shelf. 85% of the Outer Continental Shelf has been off limits for 30 years in this country. No wonder we're importing more than 60% of our oil. John, thank you very much.